But this would have been a big crowd for us, uh, Lord, and I praise him for what, how, how he's working in our lives and where he's brought us from, how he's moving in things that we I prayed for for seven years now. He's maybe longer that he is working in and he's moving. I, I won't stand to my feet tonight just praise him for that. Andrew has to go back to work on Tuesday. I would like you to pray for him and remember him in your prayers and that the Lord keeps him safe on the highway and it's a terrible time down, you know, in South Florida and down in Central Florida where we're at. So just keep him in your prayers when you can. Backslider on God made him a promise. Been over 20 years ago, and I've not done it since. I've not done it since. I've still been as the devil, and I've never done what I promised him I'd not do no more. Yeah, no matter how far you run, you can't run from God. I told John he thought he was going to run. He got on the ship bound for Tarsus. Do you know what? They found him down in the bottom of the ship asleep, and about to drown. He said, cut brides up and call on your God. Maybe he'll have favor on us. In my words, you read the book of Jonah. You know, we'll, we'll perish not. And they tried their best to get back to the sea, but they couldn't. He said, and they cast a lot to find out what, who was the cause. And Jonah done told him that he was the cause. He was a Hebrew. He was like heaven and earth. Amen. He said, well, what did we do? He said, just throw it overboard. They didn't want to. They said, we never went to school when we were up there. We were over there. And he told him over for it. He'd come, and they made a vow to the Lord. Sometimes you just going to have to surrender your heart to the Lord. And let the Lord have his way. Sometimes you can't fix the problem. You are the problem. You are the problem. When you can yield your heart to the Lord, when you can come humble as a little child, then the Lord can help you. Until you do that, Try to do everything on your own is what you're going to do. Now, you know, one speaks to me, made a mess of it. I've tried for years to run, run from the Lord. Went all over the place to run. Used to go all over the world. I just should run from the Lord. I got so sick, I was up in Lexington. Worked in Georgetown, Nicholasville, Lexington. And got so sick, I had to come back home. I think met my wife about three months out of that, about six months out of that, we was married. Still running, running, come all the way back in the floor, they're running, they're working. But you know what? I had to get, give up and quit running. I had to give up and quit running. Sometimes we just got to stand still and see what the Lord has for us. And get to the point where we can hear the Lord. When He speaks to us, that's a problem. A lot of times we get too busy. Yeah, too busy. That's why I like to get out Sunday morning and just take a walk. Just get out and feed my horses, feed dogs, just get out. Away from everything, everybody. Just keep by myself. Just me and the Lord. I can hear what he's saying. There'll be another testimony. second floor elevator to the third floor the Lord spoke to me and said he's running his last mile home and I went down there and prayed for him and I saw that song little John I said prepare yourself mm -hmm. I said Lord just show me he's running his last mile I said he's running his last mile 
that went tithe and a half weeks. Mike went on to be with the Lord. I thought about it. I prayed for him. And I felt so good. I told little John I could leave right now with him. He wouldn't share me. And I said, I don't know when he's leaving here, but I know he's your room. So I smiled. Yeah. When the Lord comes by and tells you something, use a prophet, you better take heed to it. Sure. You better take heed to it. When I'm singing and stuff, you better listen. But a lot of songs got a lot of spiritual meaning to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought about the brother Jerry. I went down there and seen your mama before she she passed away. I went down there and the Lord been bidding me to go down and tell her that she was that little widow woman down the Sarapath baking a few cakes. And I said, I don't know how many cakes you got to bake. I said, but you'll sustain the man of God. I said, you'll sustain Brother John. And she said, I know. She said, you, you couldn't have been said nothing that was wrong with her. Lying and nothing else. Been her sit there and talk. And I got to see her shake her head one more time. I prayed for her. And I thought, there ain't nothing wrong with her. Now, she talked, this me and her talked. They said she losing her mind, didn't remember nothing. Mm -hmm. And her sister right there just talked and talked. I said, I don't know how many cakes you got to bake. I said, but you got a few more little cakes to bake. I said, I don't know. I said, but if you make it before I do, I said, you wait on me on that other side. I said, if I make it before you do, I'll be waiting right there. I'll be waiting right there. <laughs> Tells you something you need to obey the Lord. I didn't want to go tell her that. I didn't want to tell her that, Brother Junior. But I know the Lord sent me down there to tell her. I said, You've got a few more little cakes to bake. And I think it might have went three months when she left the nursing home and she went to have it. Mm -hmm. It might have been two or three months that the Lord called her on home. I said, I don't know how many more cakes you got to bake. But I said, You'll help us sustain Brother John. I said, He's that man of God. She said, I know. She said, you don't know how people come to get you and talks about it. I said, I've been afraid and I'll keep praying. It's obedience. Mm -hmm. It's obedience. How will you, are you going to be to obey God? Do you want God to move for you? How about that guy down on the corner that's standing, that's eating five dollars. Some of them standing there don't need it. But when you pull up to a gas station, a man's standing there and you reach him five dollars and he just looks at you. He can't say nothing. He can't say a word. And just you can tell the Lord that he needs that money. Man, that's right. It's just been obedient. When a man comes down out of the field, the Bible said to, to you tell him to go ahead and sit down and eat and you the master of the house wait on him though. He said, make myself ready then when I drive eat drunk then you can the Bible said, what we should we say is we're just unprofitable servants. We're just doing what the Lord has us to do. I'm just glad to be used to tonight. Anybody else got a testimony?